good afternoon and welcome uh, to the lung health and risk uh, of tobacco during COVID. My name is Denise Welch. I am the Associate Program Manager for Black Health. This is a collaboration between Black Health and the Her Herbert Irvin Comprehensive Cancer Center uh, Community Outreach. Just a little bit about who we are. Um, we are in Blanche or Black Health, the National Black Leadership Commission on Health. We were founded in 1987 and founded as BLACA. In 1997, we expanded nationally, becoming in BLACA, the nation's oldest nonprofit organization of 32 years, dedicated to educating, empower, mobilizing, and empowering Black leaders to meet the challenge of fighting HIV AIDS. In 2010, other health disparities were added to the mission. 2019, rebranding and expansion. So why did MBLACA expand its focus areas? Black African Americans face significantly higher burdens of the eight focus areas. These produce health disparities differences in health among groups of people. Our goal is health equality. Everyone has the opportunity to attain their highest level of health. A history of racism has led to these health disparities rather than biological factors. In order to achieve health equality, we need to focus on the social determinants of health. And so our rebranding and expansion. Champion Black health through advocacy, policy, and action. Again, we're the National Black Leadership Commission on Health, Inc. And our mission is to champion the promotion of health and prevention of diseases to reduce the disparities and achieve equity within the Black community. Our vision is to reduce the disparities and achieve equity to promote the health and well being of Black communities through advocacy, policy, and action. We at Black Health would like to extend a warm welcome to our presenters from the Herbert Irvin Comprehensive Cancer Center community, outreach, and engagement. Andrea Reyes leads the community health education for the Office of Community Outreach and Engagement at Columbia University's Herbert Irving Comprehensive Cancer Center. She has over 20 years in health education experience with the focus of improving health literacy and easing access to clinical resources for communities throughout New York City. Recently, she has become a tobacco treatment specialist and is helping people through the process of quitting tobacco products. We also have Dr. William Ballman, who's a pulmonologist. Dr. Bowman is an associate professor of medicine at Columbia University Medical Center in the Division of Pulmonary Allergy and Critical Care. He is part of the faculty leadership for Columbia's Lung Cancer Screening Program. Today, he will be speaking about the relationship between smoking and COVID and how you can do your best to protect yourself. Again, we want to welcome Andrea Reyes and Dr. William Bowman. Thank you very much for that lovely introduction. Um, my name is Andrea and I will be working with you today to talk about tobacco. Um, we just wanted to give you a warm welcome. Thank you so much for attending and taking out, taking time out from your busy schedules to um, attend this workshop. And we hope that you get a lot out of it. 
So just very quickly, who we are at Columbia, we're the Office of Community Outreach and Engagement, and we're a team of community educators, outreach coordinators, and researchers. Um, we do many things, but one of the things that we do do is we examine data on cancer trends in and around New York City, and we identify the areas that have the greatest needs. We work with community organizations to um, create projects that address uh, the, address the health disparities, disparities in these neighborhoods. And one of the many things that we do is that we create these workshops for the community so that we can try our best to reduce the cancer burden and the cancer health disparities in the communities served by the Cancer Center. So we're gonna jump right in um, to our presentation. I have a lot of information and I tend to speak quickly, but I would really like a robust discussion at the end. So um, uh, forgive me, please, if I go quicker than, than uh, you would prefer. So today we're gonna learn a bunch of different things. Number one, we will learn about what tobacco is. We will learn about different types of tobacco products, um, including the smoke, the smokeless, dissolvables, and vape. Um, we will learn what's in them, what harm they can do to our body, and where to get help to quit smoking, among other things. Among other things, we will talk about COVID and smoking, and that's uh, Dr. Boldman's presentation. Let's jump into what is tobacco. So tobacco is a plant. It's grown for its leaves. They are dried and fermented before being put into tobacco products. Tobacco contains nicotine, an ingredient that can lead to addiction, which is why so many people who smoke tobacco find it difficult to quit. There are also many other potentially harmful chemicals found in tobacco um, and are created by burning it. Tobacco can cause many different types of cancer, um, including cancer of the lung, larynx, which is your voice box, mouth, esophagus, throat, bladder, kidney, liver, stomach, pancreas, colon, can create cancer all over the body, um, as, a, as well as acute myeloid leukemia, which is in your blood cells. Um, people who use smokeless tobacco, and we will talk about that more in detail, have an in increased risk of cancers of the mouth, esophagus, and pancreas. Okay, these are some examples of smoked tobacco products. Um, they range from cigarettes to hookah and all of these different products in between. Okay, what is in a cigarette? A cigarette contains over 7,000 chemicals. Um, 600 ingredients, and when burned, they create over 7,000 chemicals, at least 69 of which are known to cause cancer. And many of these ingredients are toxic, as you can see from the photo um, and the different descriptions of what's inside a cigarette. Okay. What does smoking do to your body? Um, smoking affects many organs, as you can see from this image, and it's not just your lungs. It's not just lung cancer. It can lead to both chronic disease and 16 different types of cancers. What does smoking do to your lungs? Um, smokers' lungs tend to go black. black. The black color is because every time you inhale a cigarette, a tar, a substance called tar, is deposited in your lungs. Over time, the tar accumulates and causes the lung to look black. Um, okay. Next slide. And um, a little bit on secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke is smoke inhaled involuntarily from tobacco being smoked by others. It can affect babies and children by creating um, wheezing and coughing, asthma attacks, and ear infections. And in adults, secondhand smoke can cause heart disease, stroke, and lead to lung cancer. Smoking during pregnancy is also unsafe. Babies would um, can be born too early and too small. They can have birth defects in their mouth and in their lips, and they can be born with damage in the brain and development in brain development and lungs. Okay. Now, smoking hookah, um, I think I think this is really relevant and important because it's very popular in the uptown communities in New York City. Um, Smoking hookah is the equivalent of smoking 100 cigarettes. And why is that? Um, it's because one session of hookah pipe smoking lasts about 45 minutes to an hour, typically. Um, and while a cigarette can last, smoking a cigarette can last two to three minutes. During that 45 minute session, um, hookah users may breathe in as much smoke as a cigarette smoker would from 100 cigarettes. 
Okay. And this is information on e-cigarettes. As you can see, they come in many shapes and sizes. Um, they are electronic devices that heat a liquid that produce a vapor. And that is why smoking um, e-cigarettes or using e-cigarettes is sometimes called vaping. Just to bring attention to the little vials on the side, for those of you who are not familiar with e-cigarettes, um, these are the, this is a liquid that goes into the um, little cartridges that you end up smoking. E-cigarette vapor, super important to know. Um, it's a myth and some people do think that it's safer than cigarettes. Um, it is not harmless water vapor. It has many chemicals. It contains nicotine, which is addictive, and it contains cancer-causing chemicals. Okay. There are risks to vaping, including nicotine addiction, irritation of your mouth and throat, irritation of your lungs that can cause coughing and, wheeze and wheezing, you can get worsening asthma or chest pain. Your blood pressure and your heart rate can go up with use of vaping or vape um, products, and um, your stomach can also be affected. E-cigarettes, um, we put in this slide because a lot of um, young adolescents and teens have been uh, trying um, vape products. And it's really important for parents and kids to know that nicotine can harm the developing adolescent brain because the brain keeps uh, developing till about age 25. Using nicotine as a teen can harm the parts of the brain that control attention, learning, mood, and impulse control. It can increase, using um, vape products can increase risk for future addiction to other drugs, and it is generally unsafe for anyone who uses it. Okay, this is an introduction to some tobacco products that you don't smoke. These are called the smokeless tobacco products. There are things that a chew and snuff and snuff. There are also um, nicotine delivery systems that dissolve in your mouth. They have these little orbs that look like pieces of gum. There are these strips that dissolve on your tongue and sticks that you can suck to get the nicotine um, rush from. Okay. What is in a smoke smokeless tobacco product? Again, lots of chemicals that can cause chronic disease and cancer. Okay. There are also health risks, risks to smokeless tobacco use, including cancers of the mouth, dental problems, cancer of the pancreas, and of the esophagus. Holding smokeless tobacco in your mouth for 30 minutes gives you as much nicotine as smoking three cigarettes. Okay. What are the benefits of quitting? There are a whole bunch of different benefits. Um, they're hard to read here. Well, I think you can. So after 20 minutes, the heart rate and blood pressure drops. Within 12 hours, um, your carbon monoxide levels drop back to normal. Your taste and smell come back within the first year of quitting. Coughing and shortness of breath decrease because you have better lung function. Within two to five years, your risk for having strokes actually falls to that of a non-smoker. And within 10 years of quitting, your risk of dying from lung cancer is half of that of an active smoker. So we do have a tobacco treatment program at Columbia for those who are interested, and I can give you some information on that. Um, the tobacco treatment program is done through counseling. Um, we can give you treatment options that work for you, help you treat, you choose the best treatments for you, give you ongoing support and motivation that you need to quit. We will answer your questions and we will help you to avoid starting again. For anyone who's interested, please take a screenshot or use your telephone to take a picture of this. Um, this is our, me, our tobacco treatment specialist. This is my uh, cell phone number and my email address. If you are interested in the program, if you want more information, I'm happy to help. Please record this information. We can also send it to you um, for anyone who registered because we would have your email address and we can email this out. Okay, I am done. Um, Dr. Bullman, are you going to share your screen? So uh, I, as the uh, 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 introduction uh, stated, I'm a pulmonary doctor. Uh, and a part, one of the things that I do is um, help um, uh, run the medical aspects of the smoking cessation that we have at the Columbia University Medical Center uh, for patients with cancer. And that's run by Grace Hillier, who's on the call. Um, and um, uh, it's a 
a pleasure to be here today to talk to you specifically about how um, smoking and COVID um, are related. So the first thing I'll say is that people are smoking more during COVID. Um, Dr. Hillier uh, is studying this uh, process. Uh, uh, she's surveying patients um, in our program and asking them about how uh, they're dealing with COVID. Um, but what we found is that there are a number of reasons, primarily stress, that are driving people um, to smoke more and making it difficult for people to quit. Um, that's not isolated to patients with cancer, that's uh, smokers basically across the board. Aside from stress, the isolation and loneliness that comes from not being able to um, um, interact in just normal ways with, uh, with family and friends, and then just the sheer boredom of, uh, of uh, many of the, um, the times uh, in, this, in this pandemic uh, era. Um, the thing that I wanted to focus on, uh, and it's not just for people who smoke, if there are people on the call who are non-smokers but have uh, friends and loved ones that smoke, um, this is important information for you all to, to have as well. So I wanted to, to address three fairly simple questions. Um, does smoking cigarettes help to spread COVID? Does, for those of you who do smoke, does my smoking place me at risk for getting COVID, higher risk than I would if I were a non-smoker? And does my smoking place me at higher risk for getting sick if I do get COVID? Um, the first question, does smoking, help to spread COVID? The answer is probably. And I say probably because we don't have good uh, scientific evidence yet. I think we will um, when all of this is over. Um, but there's very good reasons to think that smoking helps to spread COVID. First of all, if you have COVID-19 and you smoke, there's a very good chance that the, the smoking habits that you're uh, using either indoors or outdoors are spreading um, COVID to those around you. First of all, smoking, uh, if you're outside wearing a mask, requires that you take your mask off. And even if you're not um, in close proximity to other people, uh, the act of not wearing a mask, uh, if you were to have COVID, um, uh, releases your COVID virus particles out into the world. Um, it's just a picture of someone um, uh, smoking with their mask partially off. And a mask that's partially off might as well be, be completely off. Secondly, smoking generates aerosols um, that contain virus particles, and those virus particles can linger in the air. If you take a look at this woman, you can see how far um, the cigarette smoke uh, is, uh, is traveling away from her body. Um, uh, that is her exhaled breath, and the, that, sm that, that smoke vapor uh, potentially contains uh, aerosols of virus. Now, aerosols are the little, very, very light particles of virus that can float away from a person. Um, uh, respiratory droplets that contain virus um, uh, generally are heavy and they, they fall to the ground. Aerosols linger in the air and they can travel away from the, the individual's breathing. If this person is smoking uh, and has a COVID-19 infection, um, uh, she's potentially spreading it to people um, in her environment. And then finally, smoking causes cough and cough causes virus particles and propels those particles away from the body. Um, sometimes much further um, than, than the six feet that you hear about in terms of socially distancing. And the most important thing to remember is that you don't have to feel sick to have a COVID-19 infection. There is a very high rate of asymptomatic COVID-19. Many, many people walking around um, not knowing that they have COVID and um, uh, they can spread that COVID infection to people um, who could then go and get COVID uh, and be sick from it. Uh, or spread it to people who are at risk uh, for dying from COVID. So the second question is, does my smoking, for those of you who smoke, place me at higher risk for getting COVID uh, uh, compared to people who don't smoke? And the answer is again, probably. We don't have very hard evidence, but some of the same things that we saw on the last slide uh, hold for people getting COVID. And the most important thing is um, uh, contact uh, with your fingers, which could potentially be contaminated and removal of your mask. Smoking, uh, either lighting a cigarette or taking a cigarette back and forth through your mouth uh, uh, is a, uh, uh, a frequent cause of you to touch your face. Uh, if there are virus particles that you've picked up from touching uh, a door handle or the, the door latch on a taxi uh, or the railing in a stairwell, 
um, and you touch those, um, your fingers to your lips, you're passing the virus into your body in a, a way that um, is one possible way of transmitting COVID-19. And as we said in the last slide, uh, smoking requires that you take your, your mask off. And we learned just in the last couple of months that the mask is doing two things. It's protecting other people from you if you happen to have COVID and it's protecting you from other people. And you lose both of those protections in both directions if you, if you take your mask off. Um, there's one particular kind of smoking um, that involves the sharing of mouthpieces and that's smoking hookah. Um, uh, passing a mouthpiece uh, from uh, person to person in a usually an indoor setting, um, uh, all maskless, is a, uh, a very, very um, uh, likely scenario where if one person was infected with COVID-19, um, many people, um, perhaps all of them, would be um, uh, uh, infected. The same goes for sharing cigarettes, the same goes for sharing uh, marijuana cigarettes. Uh, or marijuana pipes or um, e-cigarettes. Um, that is a, a very, very high risk thing to do uh, when there's a high proportion of COVID-19 infection out in the community. This is just a bunch of people smoking hookah and I'm uh, 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 just, I think everyone can see that that is an environment um, that in the, these times is, is not safe. Finally, um, does my smoking place me at higher risk for getting sick if I do get COVID? As I said, a large percentage of people get infected with COVID-19 and feel nothing. Large percentage of people feel mildly ill and recover, um, but a significant percentage of people, particularly people who fall into certain risk groups, get COVID and get very, very sick. And unfortunately, a, a small percentage of people do die from COVID. And the answer to this question is, is absolutely. This is something for which we have very strong scientific evidence. People who smoke are at higher risk for getting sicker if they get COVID, all right? And, and we know that the, the increase in risk is not small. Smokers who get COVID-19 infection are twice as likely to progress from mild disease to severe disease. And severe disease in COVID is generally when you're sick enough to need oxygen, and therefore need to be in a hospital and are at significant risk of progression to death. And roughly about 15% of people who get sick from COVID go on to get severe disease. And the rate is about twice for people who smoke, about 30% of people who get sick with COVID who are active smokers um, get, um, uh, uh, get severe disease with COVID-19 infection, okay? This is what COVID-19 infection when it's severe disease looks like. This is a person who was on oxygen. This is a person who's on a monitor. This particular person's on a mechanical ventilator, um, a non-invasive ventilator to help them with their breathing. Um, we talk about COVID-19 um, having about a 1% or so risk of death. Uh, once you've made it into the hospital, your risk of dying from COVID is, is substantially higher from that. So, um, uh, that is uh, something that's been borne out uh, of studies coming out of China, going back to the, the pandemic there in December and January. And it was, um, again, demonstrated in studies, people here in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, active smoking does increase your risk of getting sicker, getting very sick from COVID-19 infection. And then finally, the things that we think put you into a high risk group in general, independent of smoking, are things that we see at high have a worse time with COVID, people with heart disease, people with lung disease, particularly people with emphysema. Um, all those things affect your prognosis in COVID, the likelihood that you're gonna do well or do poorly with COVID-19 infection. So there's, there's a lot of overlap with those disorders and with smoking and, um, and uh, uh, the prognosis of, of COVID-19 infection. So as I started this you know, short talk with, uh, people are smoking more during COVID, not less. Um, when we started, this, when Grace started her study, we weren't actually sure. Maybe people were afraid to go outside and buy cigarettes. Maybe people would be um, uh, afraid to go outside and therefore people who tended not to smoke indoors were gonna smoke less. Uh, and that may be true for some people, but certainly not for everybody. And again, these are the reasons, um, even in the absence of being sick, COVID-19 infection 
um, in our community has caused all of us to be uh, extremely stressed, all of us to feel uh, isolation and loneliness, and all of us to, to have periods where just the sheer boredom of life not being back to normal. So if you are actively smoking, COVID-19 infection is actually one more reason to quit. And I know that sounds a little bit of a paradox. If, if the stress of COVID is making me smoke more, how it's going to make, be all that much harder to quit. And that is true. Um, but if you haven't availed yourself of the resources that are available, uh, counselors um, like Andrea um, and her team um, uh, are available for you to, to help you um, become a non-smoker even in, uh, in times of COVID. Independent of that, there are absolutely things that you should absolutely be doing to protect yourself and keep yourself from getting infected. And I know we've all heard um, from many, many uh, health experts and uh, uh, politicians about the, um, the things that we need to do to stay safe from COVID, but it's just, it bears, uh, all of them bear repeating, and there are things that smokers can do to, to lessen their risk of getting sick. So the basics, um, socially distance from others, uh, at least six feet or more, wear a mask at all times and wear it correctly over your mouth and nose. Um, you do not need to take your mask off to talk on your telephone. You do not need to take your mask off um, and shouldn't when you um, encounter a, a friend on the street, um, wear a mask and wear it all the time, uh, except in your own household with those people in whom you're, you're sharing day-to-day -day contact. Uh, avoid social gatherings. This is the single most important driver for the resurgence of COVID over the last couple of weeks. People have gotten tired of, of, of the restrictions on life uh, uh, and the things that we've asked, been asking people to do to stay safe. Uh, there's fatigue that has set in and uh, loneliness that has set in and that's driven uh, people to, to, to socially gather. I have one dear, dear patient who's 90 years old and and she, she finally had missed too many of her grandchildren's birthdays and the family had, had missed too many birthdays. So they gathered together, a group of 13 of them, and, um, and um, the 90-year-old grandmother got sick with COVID. One person at the party had COVID and, and a number of people were infected with COVID. She very happily did very, very well. Um, uh, she was in obviously a high-risk group because of her age and uh, she was a former smoker with some emphysema. Um, she did absolutely fine and has recovered from her COVID. Um, but those are the kinds of social gatherings that, um, that uh, where you think you're safe because you're with people you know um, that um, are, uh, are spreading COVID now. Avoid those things. And that unfortunately includes Thanksgiving. I'll tell you what I tell everybody, and that's uh, just say Thanksgiving is on hold for next week. We're going to declare when, this, when we're all vaccinated, you know, March 15th or March 28th or whatever your family wants to do. That's, that's Thanksgiving 2020. And we're going to cook a big turkey and celebrate then. But, um, but gathering with family now is not, not the thing to do. Similarly, avoid restaurants and bars, even restaurants and bars that are open at limited capacity are um, a place where people are gathering and taking their mask off. That is not a place to go now, right now. Do not smoke for the, the tips for smokers. Do not smoke in groups, uh, even um, uh, uh, people that you know. Absolutely do not be sharing cigarette pipes, marijuana cigarettes. Um, wash your hands often. If you go outside to smoke, wash your hands before you go out um, and uh, wash your hands when you come back in. Every surface that you've touched um, between leaving and coming back into your house is a potentially way to be um, transmitting COVID to yourself. Wash your hands often, avoid touching your face at all times. And absolutely, 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 I'm happy to answer questions about the vaccine um, uh, in the Q&A, but when a vaccine is available, get in line to get vaccinated. People who smoke, um, people who have lung disease, um, uh, uh, absolutely should protect themselves uh, when a vaccine is available. The vaccines are being um, looked at for safety very, very aggressively. Um, there will be many thousands of people, tens of thousands of people who are vaccinated before um, you're likely to get your vaccine, just statistically, when it is offered to take it. And um, I can't say that um, strongly enough. So with all that, I'm going to conclude. And um, like I said, I'm happy to answer questions um, uh, uh, related to, to COVID and smoking in the, um, um, the Q&A session. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Bowman. Um, I would like for everyone um, who has a question to please type it into the chat. We're happy to answer. Um, we do have one question right now. And um, the what I think it's asking is, if you're wearing a mask, could smoke affect you? I think the answer to that is um, uh, 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 possibly um, when you're wearing a mask, another person's smoke is their exhaled breath. Uh, masks are, are protective, but not 100% protective. If you can smell someone's breath through, their ma through your mask, um, uh, if you can smell someone's smoke through your mask, you're potentially inhaling viral particles from that person. Um, the, the, you've heard the term N95 mask. Uh, an N95 mask is 95% effective at blocking aerosols. That means about 5% of them actually do get through the mask. Most cloth masks and most uh, these kinds of masks are not N95 masks, so the protection is less than 95% effective. The masks still help because it reduces the amount of virus that comes into your body, even if you are exposed, and it makes it less likely that you'll get sick. You have to have a certain amount of virus that you're exposed to that your immune system can't fight off, and, um, uh, and um, uh, the, the, the burden is, uh, that you're exposed to is reduced by any kind of mask wearing. But yes, if you're, if you're smelling someone else's smoke through your mask, you're smelling their exhaled breath and potentially exposing yourself to virus. Thank you so much. So I actually have a question. If someone's smoking, you know, this is Manhattan, you might have someone smoking 30 feet away and they're exhaling and you've got your mask on and you're coming towards them down the street and you smell it. Um, this is what you said then, does that stand as well? Because I think, you know, I'm thinking someone's close by, you know, or standing in front of you smoking versus someone 30 feet away, you do still smell the smoke. How does that work? Well, you're, you're describing a very brief contact with someone's smoke. You're likely to be, you know, passing them in a few, just a few seconds. That is a very, very minimal exposure. Generally, and this is why social gatherings are bad, generally in order to get COVID from someone, you have to be within a certain distance of them, probably around six feet, and you have to spend some time with them. So fleeting contact is not likely to give you COVID. Um, there's always a chance, but, but it's unlikely to give you COVID. Uh, masked exposure within six feet makes it less likely that you're gonna get COVID. And what you describe a masked exposure that's very, very brief, um, contact, extended contact is generally thought to be around 15 minutes or more. So um, if you're spending less than 15 minutes with somebody, um, uh, your chances of getting COVID are, are fairly low. Um, that is not by any means a license to spend 15 minutes in a social gathering and then leave. Avoid those social gatherings altogether and, um, and you'll be safe. Okay. Thank you. I will, I will also qualify one last thing. A lot of people are, are finding ways to do an outdoor Thanksgiving. If you can safely set up a Thanksgiving where people are outdoors and eating six feet away, that is a much, much safer thing than an indoor Thanksgiving. Um, if, you're, if you're one of the lucky ones that is in a place where it's warm, I don't know what the weather's gonna be like next Thursday, but if you have mm -hmm. outdoor heaters or a place where you can go outdoors, that, that, is, that is safer than an indoor social gathering. Thank you so much. There are some questions in the chat. Some are being sent to me privately. Um, okay, so here's a question. When the vaccine is given to all of us, will we still have to wear masks? Um, uh, chances are, the answer is uh, for a short time, yes. And then at some point, probably no. So at some point, the amount of COVID in the community is gonna become so small um, that the chances, just random chances that you're gonna be encountering or spending time with someone who has COVID will, will go very, very down, uh, uh, down uh, quite far. Um, the, uh, the, I say for a short time, we probably will be wearing masks because it will take time for us to, to build up immunity in the community. And, and that's why I'm imploring people to take the vaccine. The more, the higher the percentage of people who are vaccinated, the quicker that high percentage of people is vaccinated, the quicker we'll see levels in the community go down to um, very, very low levels where it will be safe for us to be out and have, have a normal life again. 
I don't know that life will ever return to normal. I think that there's a good likelihood that uh, mask wearing will be something that will be reasonable to do on, you know, plane flights where scenarios where we're, you know, confined to, um, um, you know, tight groups of people that we don't know. Um, we're likely to see coronavirus um, ebb and flow um, in the communities uh, the way we see seasonal influenza ebb and flow. Um, the more people get vaccinated and the quicker we vaccinate the population, the less likely, the quicker we'll be able to get rid of masks. Um, there's another question in, um, if someone has antibodies and gets infected and is carrying it but not showing symptoms and is fighting it, can they infect someone else? So in general, um, uh, we still don't know a lot about COVID. Uh, one of the things we don't know is how long the protection uh, of antibodies lasts. So just for the, at its most basic, for those of you who don't know, antibodies are the things that your body makes after you've been exposed to something um, uh, that then on your second exposure and your third and fourth and fifth protects you. So you don't get sick that second, third and fourth exposure. That exposure the first time can be to the, the infection itself and that can be asymptomatic infection or, or infection when you're sick or to a vaccine. Your body builds antibodies to a vaccine in the same way that you build antibodies to the actual infection. What we don't know about COVID is how long antibodies last in your body and how long they are protected. Uh, one of my colleagues, one of the doctors who was working early in the pandemic in the emergency room got sick with COVID and uh, he was antibody positive back in March when, um, when he got sick and, you know, eight months later, he's still antibody positive. Does that mean he's immune to COVID? Does that mean he can't get it again? We really don't know yet. And uh, chances are he's less likely to get sick uh, if he were exposed again. Um, but we don't know if that's gonna last eight months or if that's gonna last a year or... If... In general, antibodies to a vaccine are protective antibodies. Uh, the, the, when you hear studies about showing the, oh, a particular vaccine is 90% effective, that means when they compare groups of people who are vaccinated versus people who are unvaccinated or had a placebo vaccination, um, there were you know, uh, nine, uh, inf nine infections in the um, unvaccinated group for every one infection in the vaccinated group or vice versa. Uh, we know that the vaccine protects, um, when we say it's 90% effective, protects people from getting it. 90% effective means that there's still a chance that you'll get sick, which is another reason why until the, um, the virus uh, really dwindles in the world, in, in our local environment, um, we probably will be wearing masks even post-vaccination. Thank you so much. Um, what's the, there's another question here. What is the percentage of people who had COVID that were smokers? Um, interesting. So um, uh, uh, I don't think we have uh, the, the answer to that fully worked out yet. Um, we saw probably about 15 to 18% of the population in New York City smoke. And, um, you know, the, the initial studies suggested that um, we saw roughly that amount of people coming into the hospital who were smokers, whether there's a statistically higher chance or not that we'll see when we have all of the data looked at from this pandemic, when it's all been sorted out, I don't know. Like I said, that, that, that hasn't been proven yet. But the, 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 the things that are more worrisome is that what we saw of the people with COVID coming into the hospital, it was um, people who had some of the diseases that are linked to smoking, people who had emphysema, people who had heart disease. A lot of those were former smokers, um, but some of them were active smokers. The, the final risk factor is, is obesity. It's a very hard thing to do anything about. If you are an obese smoker, um, I would be absolutely, absolutely um, uh, uh, diligent, just be absolutely vigilant about um, keeping yourself safe with mask wearing and hand washing and all of that. Thank you. Um, there's a question. If I quit smoking now, will I be more protected from COVID if I get it in the next couple of weeks? Absolutely. So it is really amazing how quickly the lungs start to heal 
after you've quit smoking. Your lungs start to um, function better, look better, feel better uh, within weeks of quitting smoking. Your immune system is better within weeks of quitting smoking. Your blood pressure is improved within weeks of quitting smoking. Um, uh, the, the absolute truth is you're, you're not in a race against the clock, but if you were to quit now, uh, and a month from now, we're seeing rates in the community um, uh, that are much higher than what we're seeing now, you are safer having quit. Um, easy thing to talk about, very, very difficult to do. Um, uh, we're not trying to, to shame anyone uh, about their smoking. Um, this is, this is a, a difficult process, but that's a, a great question. Yes, you, you will be a healthier person and you will be more likely to fight off COVID and less likely to get sick. A month from now if um, if you've quit today. Thank you. Um, there's a question that was answered in the chat but maybe you want to expand more on it. The question is on average how many times does a person try to quit smoking before they are successful? Um, uh, generally many times. Uh, Andrea, do you have, uh, uh, Andrea's one of our counselors, do you have an <laughs> a, a easy answer for that? There is no easy answer. I think it's very individual and some people quit more than 10 times and still keep coming back. Um, the good thing is that they're able to quit. The issue is that they have trouble staying quit. And so then um, more help is needed in trying to stay quit. Yeah, um, the, the, the people who've tried and failed um, can be demoralized by that failure. The, the more times you try, the more likely you are to quit. So the only, the only way you can um, hurt yourself is by failing once and then viewing yourself somehow as a failure. No, you're, you're, you're in a process and you're 100% right, Andre, it's an individualized process. Every person is different, every smoker is different. Um, it may be that you need to, to quit several times in order to learn from those mistakes, learn from those failures to, to quit ultimately successfully. Just regroup, get more support, change the methodology that you use, the, the, the things that you tried to do um, and, um, and try again. And that's, that's all we can say is, is just try again. Thank you. Um, there is a question, Dr. Bowman, that says, um, what do you recommend as an ideal situation for Thanksgiving if we wanna have family over? I know that you said if we can do it outside, that would be more helpful or to do it in March and cancel, um, which is a great idea. We can have all our celebrations in the spring and it'll be a very busy spring, right? Birthdays, uh, we missed Easter this year. For those of you who celebrate Easter, um, we're gonna uh, declare um, a, a time to gather and celebrate these events uh, 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 when, when it's safe to do so. So I would say, uh, I, I mentioned um, having Easter, uh, having Thanksgiving outdoors, a, a really, really wonderful way to potentially spend um, Thanksgiving together that could potentially be safe is to gather in a large room with masks on, spend some time with family um, without eating and drinking, and then have everyone go home with uh, you know, a gift package of uh, a boxed Thanksgiving dinner that they could eat with their individualized family. Um, that's a way potentially to, um, to gather um, and, and do so safely. Um, the, uh, lots of people are talking about uh, uh, traveling for Thanksgiving. You have to understand the, the, the travel process. I'm sure I'm telling everyone what they already know. The travel process itself uh, exposes you to additional risk. Um, there's no real safe way to, to test yourself without you know, quarantining to guarantee that you're negative. Um, I would say, celebrate Thanksgiving with the people that you've been eating um, and drinking with um, uh, up till now and um, save the, the family, limit the family functions to, to masked activities and you could potentially um, socialize in a way that, that's, that's safe. Thank you. I think that's gonna be our last question unless someone very quickly types in the last question. Um, I would like to, um, at a, in, in a few moments, just share a, an event that we have coming up and, and share our information if anyone would like more information. 
No, just I really appreciate the opportunity to, um, to talk to all of you. Uh, I wish you well on your, um, your health journey, whatever it involves. If you are smoking, I absolutely wish you well in your efforts to quit. As I said, the, uh, as you said, Andre, from the very beginning, there are resources available for all of you and um, uh, uh, no one should feel like they're, they're quitting without, without um, access to support or trying to quit without access to support. So um, with that, I'll close and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk to all of you.